is the name of Jesus Christ. He is the Lord forever <coughs> and ever. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is good. And he is kind to us uh, this afternoon. We welcome you to join with us this day as we receive the word of God from our bishop, Bishop Peter Gatimo. And we are coming live from Apostolic Faith Church, Bahati, Nairobi, Kenya. And we thank God for the opportunity. And indeed, we thank God, brethren, because we know that God has been blessing our lives. And even today, brethren, God has given us an opportunity that we may receive his blessings this day. Our bishop is ready to minister the word of God. And as you come, or as you join with us, have your Bible ready, have your pen and also your notebook, and also prepare your heart that the Lord may minister to, to your life. We trust God that he's going to heal you, he's going to uplift you, he's going to minister to you in every way, because our God is Jehovah God who is omnip omnipresent. He is everywhere, even where you are today. He is right there to minister to you, and that is why he has sent his word through his servant that he may heal your life and minister to you in a mighty way. We are going to pray, and then we welcome our bishop to come and minister the word of God. Let us pray now. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name because of your goodness and kindness. Thank you for this opportunity that you've given unto us. Father, as we sit before you, Lord, we pray that your word may have a praise in us, that we be built up and become better in your will and in your work, O Father, in the ministry. Bless your, your servant, our bishop, as he comes over to minister. Lord, he is your vessel. Use him and bless him. In just name we pray and give thanks. Let us now welcome our bishop to come and minister the word of God. Welcome, bishop. Thank God you. bless you. Uh, thank you. God bless you. We are together. And, I, I, and we know we will always be together. By the grace of God, because the Lord who started good work in us will continue with it until the day of the Lord. According to Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Uh, last time we were together, we shared uh, uh, on a topic that is stay safe from curses. And a curse is a strong, negative, destructive uh, attack that repeats itself, especially uh, in a people who are sharing the same uh, family uh, links or family uh, background or family bloodline. And, and it has been proved, we are sharing this because it's so evident now even in hospitals, that when you have a disease and you realize that in that family, when that disease starts, it continues uh, to attack or to affect or to be detected uh, in other family people. You find a brother has died of cancer. And then, after some time, the sister has a cancer of a different manner. After some time, another brother. Now... If it's beyond medical, uh, medical evidence. In fact, doctors are just trying to study that. And you know, the human study will comply with the evidence. The human study may not uh, have a revelation. It's only God who has revelation. Human study uh, becomes more, uh, more better in studying an issue and agreeing with the details of an issue. If today somebody is studying about cancer, it is studying about the disease the way it is in a deeper way. That's what we call maybe specification, or somebody who is specialized in something. Uh, and uh, sometimes uh, it's only God who has the other part, saying now, why is it happening? And what does it mean? And what is behind it? Because sometimes you wonder, how can somebody have cancer and once that cancer is touched or maybe somebody operates on that growth, immediately the cells migrate to their vital organs. I've witnessed church members, even relatives. Uh, they say this person has a tumor in the bladder, has a tumor in the pancreas, has a tumor in the lungs, 
when they cut it to remove the, the, the cells, they say after two days, the cells migrate to the heart, they migrate to the, to the liver, they migrate to the kidney. Why do they relocate to the vital organs in a way that that person within three, four days dies? And why? Where do they get the life? Who migrates them? What is the life behind the cancer cells that relocate to attack vital organs and cause death? And that's, that's, that, 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 that's quite uh, strange to human mind. And however much we try to avoid the spiritual life, the spiritual side of life, we need to admit it. The problem is that people, when they move the spiritual side, Sometimes they go to witchcraft, divination. So you end up in a uh, unprofessional way of spiritual life. Whereby now you go to somebody who accuses other people saying they are bewitching you. Well, as now, God, the God we serve, you not talk about that you, are, you have cancer because somebody did this. God, you tell us, I want to heal that cancer. It's from, it's from the evil one. And God, you just bring a simple answer. Be healed. Or maybe he tell us what he wants us to do with, uh, with that kind of attack. And therefore, in the name of the Lord, we need now to admit that we, we, there is a way we, we can avoid these things. There is a way we can avoid these things. If you do a research of families, you notice 80% of these cases emanate from sin, emanate from a background of evil or rebelliousness, emanates from some evil practices, emanates from lack of cover. They, they come from lack of uh, consistency in faith. They emanate from exposure to satanism, exposure to evil. And therefore, we need to, to study that. This we, last time we covered an, on several aspects. Today we want to go to the next part. Uh, remember the last time we talked about demonic powers that takes dominion, where that family lives, or where that family or individuals laced up in a demonic spirit. You you realize you married a wife from a certain family that had a demonic curse. When she comes to your marriage, you discover something is following her. It is affecting your marriage. You are striving with it. She is unable to resist it. She is, able, she is unable to be strong when she faces that kind of adversity or attack. And you discover in marriage, you are blending together people who have been raised up from different backgrounds and from those backgrounds eh, they experienced an attack they experienced uh, a kind of curse or a demonic uh, a demonic stronghold and and that's why we need to be very and that's why when come to marriage we talk about uh, compatibility of faith people ignore the issue of faith it's very important it's very important it's not just a beautiful lady or a handsome man or whatever. Faith, right faith, standard of faith, perception, attitude. What does that person believe about God? If they believe about God, to what extent do they practice the reality of God? To what extent do they respond to the reality of God's presence? Because People believe in God, but it's quite general when people say, I believe. we need to know. Let us ask a question. To what extent does your wife or your husband believe in sexual righteousness? To what extent do that bishop believe in resisting temptation? You find now this person, I mean, I've been in the ministry, and you find now, a certain young girl was left behind to stay with her uncle. Only to know that that uncle eh, uh, misused that girl sexually. And the girl said, no, you know, when I was staying with my uncle, 
we used to have sex. And you, you wonder to what extent do, they, do people believe in sanctity? Do people believe in practice of righteousness? And yet that uncle is a leader in a certain religion. Then what do they believe? What do they practice? What do they mean when they say we believe in God? When they come now to practice of God, we don't see God. They are immoral. They are fornicators. And yet, then, to, uh, then we ask ourselves, who do they, what kind of God do they believe in? To what extent do they respond to the reality of God? And what perception do they have about God? And what kind of experience do they have with that God? There are so many questions to ask about people who come around practicing faith in God. We need to be very careful. And therefore today, let's continue uh, with stay safe from curses. The, second, the, the, the other part, maybe the fifth or sixth part, it depends on yeah, the way you record, is what we call blood relationship. Blood relationship, inherited corruption through family bloodline, inherited. You know, the more we live, the more we are genetically corrupt. Because during the days of Jacob, during the days of Abraham, people could marry their cousins. That's why, you know, Isaac could advise Jacob, go to your uncle's place. You can marry the daughter to your uncle. I think during the times of Adam and Eve, they could marry sisters. There was no problem. I, I, I suspect so. But the more we live, the more we become genetically corrupt. The question is, does the blood record evils? So that when you produce a baby, your sex cells propagate evil genetically to your son. How comes you find this, this parent is a business person and the sons are business persons? This parent is quite lazy and their daughters and sons are extraordinarily lazy. And you wonder, how does it happen? You know, this parent used to be a thief and you discover he has given birth to a daughter who at very tender age, even when he, she, the daughter is not so conscious, the daughter is a thief. You find a young girl whom you don't, th who has not some, who is not conscious about, uh, about stealing. Unconsciously, the girl is stealing. And you discover the parents who are thieves. And how does that pass on? And then we ask ourselves, do we have demons around families that make sure you, they propagate to sons and daughters some of the evils that parents have? Or is it passed through, is it, is it genetically passed on? To some extent we can say it's passed on genetically. Because even the doctor saying, if this disease exists in your parents, it's likely to exist in you. Doctors can only explain that through sexual thing. But the truth is, when it come, they can't go beyond that because doctors have, the evidence of production that doctors have is only through pregnancy, conception, that process. And therefore, we need to be, to know that there's blood relationship. Let me tell you what you do. If you are born in a certain family, you, you, and the Holy Spirit, and you are born again, you are born in a certain family, and you are born again. Let me prove something. If you go to John chapter 3 verse, uh, verse 3. Let's see the scriptures by God's grace. John. Aha. Uh -huh. Hoping that you have. You are able. Uh, that's, that's good. John chapter 3. Jesus answered and said to him. Most assuredly. You know in King James Version it says. Three, three I say unto you. I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Can I ask a question? What is literal meaning of being born again? You know, you are already born. It's as if Christ is saying, I'm reproducing you in another way. 
I tend to think the practice of born again life should deal with inherited traits that are evil. Should deal with things that are I'm born again. If in my family people are lazy, the new birth cannot carry on the traits, the habits of laziness. If I'm born again. If I'm born again, and in our family we are very weak. In our family, uh, in our family we are, people are drunkards. If I'm born again, that habit cannot exist in that born again experience. I, you know, Christ says, you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. And now Nicodemus interprets this language uh, on human level. He says, how can man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born again? And I just said, most assuredly, I say to you, Unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Jesus in, Genesis, in John chapter 3 verse 6 categorizes the two births. One, born of flesh is flesh. Born of the spirit is spirit. If you check this scripture... The word spirit is not the same way. Bible, Bible, born of spirit is capital S, which is the Holy Spirit. A spirit, small s. That's very unique. Well, you know, what it says, if you are born of the Holy Spirit, you are spiritual. You, you have a spiritual perspective let me, let me say this. This is the Holy Spirit. This is your spirit. The Holy Spirit is capital S. It's God. Your spirit is human spirit. It says, if you are born of this capital S spirit, Holy Spirit, you are spirit. What does that mean? The Holy Spirit will produce his own life in your human spirit. And your human spirit we will rule your flesh and you rule your income and produce the Holy Ghost Spirit in aspects of life. That's when we say, Jesus is Lord. Where does Christ enter? He enters my spirit. He takes lordship and out of my own spirit, I'm able to produce the aspects of the Holy Spirit in human life. That's why I, I can speak the things of the, of the spirit in the physical. If the Bible says, you shall be the head and not the tail. I can now produce that confession, activate that word into a lifestyle of curse and reproduce the things of the Holy Spirit in, in the world. So that whatever was born of this flesh is no longer a slave of the flesh. Although I am in the flesh, the spirit of God in me has produced his own, own ways that dominates my flesh. So I'm not a slave of curses. That's very important. You know, whatever is born, it says, whatever is born of the flesh is, is flesh. Whatever is born of, of the Holy Spirit is spirit. That's very important. And then, uh, and, then verse, uh, and then if you go back to John, John chapter 1, you discover the Bible talks about, that is John chapter 1, verse, uh -huh. I hope you are able to access your scripture. John chapter 1, verse 11. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him, but as many as received him. To them, he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe in his name. And the Bible says, who were born not of blood. This is human blood. It's saying now, 
these people have been born in another way above human blood. Not born of blood, not born of the will of flesh. This is a new reproduction by the Holy Ghost. Not of the will of man, but of God. These are three things. Blood, human blood, human flesh, and human will. Not these people are no longer operating as in the realm of human blood, human flesh, human will, but in the will of God. And that's why we need to be regulated from the standards where, where family curses, tribal curses, eh, bloodline curses operate. If you go to the book of Second Peter, I learned something there that, that I know is very important. Second Peter chapter 1. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, from verse 2, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through this you may be partakers of divine nature. Partakers of divine nature. You, you see, one of the deliverance that we need, we need to experience is through promises of God that are so precious. We receive promises. We pray about it. The Holy Ghost activates those promises in our lives. Until now, what the nature that God has, what God feels, what God thinks, who God is, that nature will become partake of God nature. We need to be born through what God says, what the Bible says, are precious and exceedingly great promises of God. That through them, we may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption. This is what we call curse. Yeah, blood relationship, human life cast, escaped the corruption that is in the world through last. We need now we need to know that in the prop, everybody, let me train you something. If today you are saved and you have received the Holy Spirit and you pray so much in the Spirit, let me tell you what you happen. The Holy Spirit, when you pray, He will show you two things that dark part of your life and the glorious part of your life. He will show you the flesh, this who you are in the flesh and this who you are in me, the Holy Spirit. Let me repeat it again. If truly you are born again and you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you speak in tongues, you pray so much and you cleave to the will of God in the Holy Spirit. By and by, it will not take too long. The Holy Spirit will show you clearly that that part where you are weak, that part where you are dark, that part where you are weak, the flesh, and he also show you that part where you walk in the Spirit. And that's what the Bible says something. There's part of deliverance. In Romans chapter 8 verse 13, after the Holy Spirit will do that, this is what the Bible says, Romans chapter 8 verse 13. If you live according to the flesh, which flesh? is the flesh that you already know. The Holy Ghost now has helped me to know. I have flesh that needs to be dealt with. That's what we call deliverance from curses. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. If by the Holy Spirit, by the Spirit, you put to death the of the body you live. How do you get delivered from curses? 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, fight, resist, subdue what the Holy Ghost has shown you to be evil, to be curses, to be strongholds of evil. Bible says you put to death. There's a possibility according to the word of God, the Holy Spirit of God helping us to put to death the deeds of the body. And then we live. We live how? The Bible, when the Bible talks about living, is living to maximum. It's living to standard. It's living to the, to the maximum of the seasons and the standard that God has planned for you. The Holy Spirit has helped me by his power to put to death some evils in my family, some evils in my body. Some are inherited, some are, 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 are acquired. Or, uh, there are things that you acquire, you can't blame anybody. But by the grace of God, the Holy Ghost, help me to put to death. The Bible talks, put into death, which means it's possible to be delivered. That's powerful. And that's why it says, verse 14, Romans 18, verse 14, for as many are, are led by the Spirit of God. These are sons of God. People think just because you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you are son of God. By book say, it's not just by receiving the Holy Spirit. It's by practicing the Holy Spirit who help us to put to death the deeds of the body. And when we do it, God says, if you are led by the Holy Ghost in that level, then you are son of God. You are daughter of God. No, receiving the Holy Spirit is one thing. But being helped by the Holy Spirit to put to death the deeds of the flesh is another thing. And I tell you, if there's, some, there's an area people have ignored, is this aspect of the Holy Spirit helping me to kill, to put to death some aspects. What has hampered church growth and unity? Are aspects in bishops, levelets, pastors, leaders, that people did not allow the Holy Ghost to help them kill some aspects. You fight people backbiting. And somebody's a bishop. You find this bishop is undermining that bishop. You find now that brother, the way he's addressing church members, the man is in the flesh. You find somebody left the church because a leader, a leader had done him or her wrongly. You find church breaking, not because of the Holy Ghost. No. I remember one time, there was a meeting and uh, bishops, some bishops were planning a very evil thing. But there's one man among them who was very prayerful. I just heard him say to them, brothers and sisters, you cannot do that to the church of Christ. One bishop among about ten of them said, can I talk to you? Yes. Do you know me as a bishop? Yes. Um, have I been in this church for many years? Yes. You cannot do that to the church of of Jesus Christ. One of them. And when I read through what these people are planning to do, I tell you, you can't admit they have even known Christ. Even Sunday school kids are better. Planning very for things. Bishop that you can call fathers of the church. Just be, you know, people in 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 they, they, want, they cleave so much on themselves. You find that bishop, when he gets ugly, he can say anything. He has been that way for 20 years. The Bible says, if by the Spirit of God, we put to death the deeds of the flesh, we will live, and the church will live, families will live, marriages will live. You find that somebody's wife, even pastor's wife, bishop's wife, bishop's whatever. If that person, you treat that person as a mature person. But there is an aspect in that person all through that when, was never put to death by the power of the Holy Ghost. That's what I'm telling people. There are two things that people need to accept. You know, I was still preaching on the Holy Ghost. If you read Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it says, and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit come, come upon you. Have you noticed something? People received the Holy Spirit, but they did not know 
What Christ was addressing is power. The Holy Spirit was to bring power. So people received the Holy Spirit, but they failed to ask the Holy Spirit the power that he was to bring. So people speak in tongues and they are weak. Acts 1, it says, the main purpose of the Holy Ghost coming is to bring power. What is power? Power, it is something anointing that carries signs and wonders and gifting that can prove God in a way that we can overcome evils. We can overcome Jerusalem. We can overcome the tribal bias. We can overcome all the boundaries. Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. We go to all these areas. We, the, you can realize that. You go to India, where there are Buddhists and whatever. But the Holy Ghost gives you power. Whatever the power you do, Buddhists will say, true and this Lord. You go to any place where people are practicing witchcraft. You cannot deal with witchcraft through philosophy. It's the power. This is the power. And witches just fall down and say, surely Christ is there. People deny themselves what the Holy Spirit was, was supposed to bring. He was supposed to bring power. So you speak in tongues, but never allowed power to be activated, to be released. There are some mistakes that the church is doing, and we need to be. And this power is the power that I use now to destroy flesh. I have said again, anybody who is walking in the spirit, the Holy Ghost will always show you, you are doing wrong. When you think evil, you are doing wrong. When you backbite, you are doing wrong. <laughs> Sometimes you see somebody, this is a church minister, you call somebody aside just to speak evil about I, I, the question you are a minister of the gospel why is not the holy ghost telling you put to death this habit that's why some churches are not growing big because there is there is there is there's is limitation of character there's limitation of habits there's limitation limitation you know you know there was a time uh, we asked people to pray for 21 days. And one of the church ministers said, Bishop is, just, is praying the church. People should not pray that way. And I thought, oh, I thought that, past, that man or that person was so spiritual. He was calling people, said, Bishop is telling people to pray that way. People will die. People I said, no, 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 no. That's what we need now. We need Jesus more than ever. The evils around are more stronger than the evils Daniel experienced in, the, in Babylon. And people are so happy it, it is working. So you find that there is something in me or you that I have not allowed the Holy Ghost to work on. And if a church minister, it they will always limit church growth. It, was, it will always limit the move of the Holy Ghost in the church. That's a very deep secret that men of God should be trained on. And you know, when you become a bishop, a uh, leveret, whatever, you feel you are now to be revered. Leave around the titles. Let's come back to the real deliverance. Let's ask myself, God, why is the church not increasing? Why am I not preaching like Paul? Why am I not preaching in the foundation of prophets and, pro and apostles? Why am I not? Why, how can I preach for a whole year and no one in the church can confirm or attest that miracles are happening because Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever. And I tell brothers and sisters, we need to handle the age, what we call uh, curses that come through blood relationship and, and some of them are affecting church growth. Now when it comes now, you know people have turned to psychological counseling to interpret some things that need to be interpreted by the Bible. Because psychological difference, uniqueness of personality. But I tell the truth, you come to the Bible, we admit we have unique personalities, but the Holy Ghost is able to mold my personality. If I'm harsh, the Holy Ghost should be allowed to mold that. If I'm lazy, the Holy Ghost should be allowed to mold that. I should not be told that people accept Accept me the way I am. And I'm failing the family. I'm failing the church. 
They should not accept me the way I am. I should adjust to the need and the season of the Holy Spirit. I want to admit, if God says he is going to take this church to a certain level, and I'm weak, I should admit that God has spoken and received power, transformation, molding until I adjust to the new move and the new season. And that's why we need to be delivered from curses that around people in their personality, in our uh, family traits, you realize that we have uh, something that needs to be... Uh, it's true. Even you find a family whereby brother, sister, whatever. I've been to families where people fight. I went to a certain family where they meet brother, sister, brother, sister, and they literally have physical fight. They are all harsh. Actually, the ones I preach to is becoming now very hard for them to become preachers. You tell this man, can you please lead the fellowship of that people? You lose 20. Because the person is very harsh. We need to work on some traits and God will help us. Some of them are, are through blood relationship. And some of them, just as I've said, we acquired them in the places where families were arranged or in things that family encountered and we never addressed. So that thing produced an effect on us, which appears to be permanent. So God bless you so much. I hope I'm becoming clear because we need to stay safe from curses. Let's continue next time. Father, I pray now that I and everybody who have listened to this preaching will from today, by the Holy Spirit, put to death the deeds of the flesh so that we can live, the church can live, marriages can live, and nations can live. In Christ we pray.